Sandy Peterson is one of those old school id software guys who never seems to get enough credit. He might not have had John Romero's rock star looks or persona, but his contributions to the classic Doom games, especially in the realm of level design, can't possibly be overstated. Hired shortly after Tom Hall left id in August of 1993, Peterson went on to become the team's most prolific level designer. Although several of his levels were started by Hall, he was ultimately credited with the entire second and third episodes of the original Doom and more than half the levels of Doom 2. While Peterson's levels weren't nearly as attractive or intricate as Romero's, they were often much more experimental and innovative. The first level he ever made, E2M6 Halls of the Damned, serves as an excellent example of his unique style. Though relatively boxy and flat compared to most of Romero's work, it's also incredibly spooky and chock full of traps, including an ingenious fake exit perfectly designed to catch players off guard. As Peterson himself put it in the official Doom Survivor Strategies and Secrets, it looks like an exit, it smells like an exit, but it's not really an exit. Episode 2's secret level, Fortress of Mystery, also demonstrates Peterson's ability to think outside the box. It's also the one he claims to be most proud of. It differs from literally every other level in the game in that it pushes players to rely on monster infighting if they wish to survive, especially from a pistol start at higher difficulty levels. Much to the annoyance of John Carmack, Peterson also had a habit of pushing Doom's engine to its absolute limits. There's perhaps no better example of this than E3M6 Mount Erebus, the game's first ever wide open sandbox level. Some other highlights of Sandy Peterson's creativity in the original Doom include E3M2, Slew of Despair, whose strange layout only really makes sense when you figure out it's shaped like a hand, and Episode 3 Secret Level Warrens, which is a carbon copy of the episode's first level all the way up to the exit room, which then gives way to a surprise showdown with the Cyber Demon and forces players to backtrack to the start of the level, encountering brand new areas and ambushes along the way. It was during the development of Doom 2 that Peterson was really able to let his creativity shine. Freed from the duty of having to finish so much of Tom Hall's work, he set out making numerous memorable levels of his own. Two of my childhood favorites, Map 08 Tricks and Traps and Map 23 Barrels of Fun, offer up gameplay experiences quite unlike anything before them. Tricks and Traps is essentially a hub of wildly different trials. And Barrels of Fun is, well, the name says it all. Map 24, The Chasm, also deserves recognition for its thin ledges over large pits of nukage, resulting in tightrope walking gameplay where traversing the environment is just as challenging as fighting the demons themselves. Peterson's personal favorite though, and arguably one of his greatest achievements, is Map 13, Downtown. The series' first ever city level, Downtown features an open layout reminiscent of Mount Erebus from the first game, except with many more buildings and far more verticality. It was so groundbreaking and inspirational, it even led to John Romero creating his own urban level in the form of Map 15, Industrial Zone. Thank you. 
These of course aren't the only levels Peterson made for Doom 2, but in my opinion they're the ones that best demonstrate what set him apart from the rest of the guys that did. When it's all said and done, Sandy Peterson's levels might not have been the prettiest, but his craftiness and ingenuity demand at least some level of respect. It's hard to imagine just how different the original Doom games would have been without his trap-laden halls and sprawling sandboxes. As always, I appreciate you guys watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. This is Chubbs, signing out.